to head out? Welcome to Stardust. Sorry, I don't think we've met before. I'm Gus. You have a really cool mom. How's Stardust treating you? That's good, but we can do better than not bad. Let me know how we can help. Majid may not have a memory for mixed drinks, but he loves listening to his patrons' problems. You'll have to let me or him know if you need any help. We try to run a tight ship around here. Oh, there isn't much to tell, really. I came to Neo SF from Arizona to finally live somewhere more thrilling. Majid needed someone good with numbers to handle back of the house sort of stuff. So here I am. I didn't grow up in big cities like this, and I always loved listening to Majid's stories from the Bay. Everything is just so exciting. Hayden? Oh, you're who Majid mentioned before, huh? Sorry. I've met him since he's a regular, but I've been out and about on business. Haven't seen him in weeks. I wish I could help more. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this, but don't feel bad if you need to interrupt me for something. Sure thing. Enjoy the bar! Hey, good to see you back! What can I do for you? Yeah? It's a little slow tonight. Things pick up and I get pulled away. You should chat with my boyfriend, Gus. He's been running around all over Neo SF looking for new acts since he handles our talent. I think he missed being behind the counter. He does get a bit overwhelmed by the hustle and bustle, but he could run this bar with one hand tied behind his back if he wanted. <laughs> eh, that's what a ROM is for. I'm a people person, and that's what matters, right? I can just look up all that other stuff. Sure thing. Don't be a stranger. Liquid left in their glass suggests the person was drinking. Don't bug people, please. You'll get us in trouble. Haven't I seen you at my tattoo parlor before? Give me a few minutes, okay? Sorry, but I'm pretty wrapped up in something important. Don't have time to talk. Haven't I seen you at my tattoo parlor before? Hey, y'all! How goes the search? Shit! I can't say I saw that one coming. I figured that they'd nab anything they needed the first time they hit the place. Huh. Any ideas who it could have been? The walls had been spray-painted with many grotesque human revolution slogans. It is possible that Hayden was targeted by the organization for his work at Parallax. 
While my development may have been a secret, he is rather well known for his work on virtual intelligence data. A layman would not understand the critical differences between myself and a VI, nor do I think the average human revolution member would care to make the distinction. Equally likely, it is an effort to throw us off the trail of who's actually done this. Right! Dr. Fairlight was very kind to point us in the direction of the Human Revolution protest leader. Hopefully we'll be able to get to the bottom of this after interviewing him. Yannick Fairlat. Uh, when'd you run into him? Oh, um, we were ambushed at the apartment and got hit with some kind of neural stunner. What? Are y'all okay? Yes. We made it to the nearby hospital, and Dr. Fairlight happened to be occupying the same room we were placed in. situation, then came here. Well, shit. Things sure are getting more serious than I first thought. Y'all need to keep a sharp eye out. Being attacked means the bastards know you're looking now. I'm confident in our ability to push on. <laughs> about the man. Fairlight always was a bit of a shut-in, even back when he ran System 1, his old company. He didn't make any more public appearances after the merger between them and Parallax, but he was still working with them for six or so years past that. Nowadays, he shows up in the news once in a blue moon for some charity thing or another. But, ugh, well, it's it's all just rumor, but I've heard he holds a grudge about it hotter than the Clantons after the Earps. I'd take care to look this particular horse in the mouth real close if I was you. Good. Now to flatten the mood. While y'all were chasing your tails, I managed to find a way into the Parallax Network. Once a man, I should be able to dig out Hayden's personal info file easily enough, including anything related to him on all security clearance levels. If Parallax has anything on Hayden's situation, it'll be in there. Fantastic, Tomcat. I knew Hayden's faith in you was not misplaced. How long do you think it will take you? Well, that's where the rubber meets the road. Parallax actually has considerably better net security than the last time I cracked in. I'm gonna need physical access. I've got a good idea where a note for us to slice into is, but it ain't exactly in a nice part of town. In fact, Police have basically wrote it off as a lost cause. <laughs> Not enough profit in it. I know Jess has some contacts in that area. She's that girl that chewed you a new rear when y'all first came here. <laughs> the 
Yeah, it's a tough sale, but she might be able to help y'all get in and out of that part of the city without ending up in a parts bin at an organ shop shop. Hey, we ain't got it that bad. I mean, at least our police force owns its own sale. I hear down in San Jose, the richer neighborhoods have actually started hiring the gangs to protect their places. <laughs> when even the rich folks can't get good police work, it's a sad state for everyone else. And the less said about LA, the better. You might not be able to tell, considering her viper's tongue and penchant for hitting the clubs harder than she's got any right to, but Jess is actually an attorney. She specializes in defending people in violation of the Human Protection Act and does almost all of her work pro bono. That's earned her a whole gaggle of pals amongst the hybrid community around here, as you might imagine. Ain't no one gonna cross her in that part of town. Black market hybridization ain't exactly HPA compliant, if you catch my drift. And none of them ever know when they might need her to defend him in court. That's a spirit! I need a little time to get all my tools together to slice into Parallax's network, but y'all keep me updated. Maybe y'all get lucky and find that data cache too. But I ain't gonna count on it. Jess is still hanging around here at Stardust, but I saw her head over to the VIP room. It's hybrid night, and she's a popular gal. <laughs> Just please remember to play nice, or her friends will thump you something fierce. I'll send Jess a message letting her know that y'all are looking for some assistance, and we'll see what happens. Sure thing, huh? I've got to head on out of here and get started on setting up the run. Just have turn, let me know when y'all are ready. Oh, I see Jess over there behind some ropes. Let's go over and say hi to her. Oh, hell no. Look, I'm really trying to have a good time today, and the Human Revolution crud muffins have made that very hard for me. Your interrogation this morning took a bad day to worse. I asked around about you, Jerno, and I don't have anything to say to you. The last thing I need is you prodding at me without telling me your press. Besides, the VIP section is only for hybrids and friends on hybrid night, and no way am I vouching for you. Hey, Bouncer! We got a capital A asshole over here! You heard her. Let's go. She didn't even give us a chance to explain ourselves. We have to get back in there and try to be reasonable. Surely she will see the importance of our task once we've explained everything. But that bouncer probably won't let us back in. Perhaps we should try befriending someone nearby and convince them to vouch for us? It's a statistical long shot, but the worst case scenario shouldn't leave an excessive amount of physical damage. Uh uh, no way I'm letting you back in. This is the entrance to the VIP area. You don't just get to show ID and walk right in.
Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? What are you having? Look up how to make that. Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. Wait, I. Ha <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm just holding up the bar rather than running it. No, I just memorized all the drinks. You're better with the customers. This one is. Here you go. Well, look who has good taste. I'm Sylvan. What's a wet drink like yourself doing here? And no one just hangs out at Stardust. Well, thanks for the drink. The club is a little dead tonight, so it's nice to see a new face. You know anyone here? Tomcat? That flashy computer kid? They're always here with a group of other geeks. Not really my type. Too busy looking at their toys to see anyone around them. Cute outfits, though. You meeting them here? That's too bad. Well, thanks for the drink, but I think I'm gonna play the room a little more. Maybe we'll run into each other again. Good to see you back. What can I do for you? Sorry, it's being rented out for a private party tonight. Hybrid night. I try not to judge, but I don't think this is your crowd. What are you having? Uh, let me look up how to make that. The open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. This one is. Thanks, honey bear. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Rawr. Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thank you, hun. Like what? Hey, hun, uh, what's in that one? 
this one is... Thanks, son. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thanks, honey bear. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that? This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thanks, son. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that? This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thanks, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Rawr. Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that? This one is... <laughs> Thanks, honey bear. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that? This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... <laughs> Thanks, honey bear. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Rawr. Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thanks, honey bear. Like 
What? Hey, hon. Uh, what's in that? This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon. Uh, what's... This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... What? Hey, hon, uh, what's... This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's... This one is... Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what? This one is... Rawr. Thank you, hon. Like what? Hey, hon, uh, what's in that one? This one is... Thanks, honey bear. Here you go. How did you know what I was planning on ordering? Well, at least keep me company while I drink it. I'm Caitlin. I'm usually a lot more sociable. Things have just been rough today. Yeah. 
My brother's going through gene therapy. He still has to go in at least twice a week for health and maintenance. There are human revolution protesters outside the clinic making it even harder for him. They're always outside harassing anyone coming in. It's exhausting. No one else lives around here, so I'm kind of all he's got. But it's not a big deal. He'll be done with the main set of treatments in a few weeks, and we'll be free of them. I just feel bad for everyone else they're messing with. Aw, thanks a lot. I'm lucky to have him. So, there's plenty of people here. What made you want to talk with me? Oh jeez, this really is my favorite drink. I have to wake up early for class, but I'm at the club, so I guess I'm already too deep in. <laughs> Graphic design with a focus on advertising. I even get to do some local stuff. Trying not to brag, but the Zone 3 ad on the bar is totally my doing. I have some really good client relationships locally, and there's so many interesting people too, like you. Hey, it's been really nice talking to you, but I kind of feel like dancing now. You, you want to come with me to the VIP area in the back? I have some friends who might be over there. We can hang out with them, they'll like you. Great, let's go. Didn't I say to beat it? We're guests of Caitlin. She said we could join her. Ugh. All right. But it's on her if you can't stay out of trouble. Uh, hey! You have an incoming call priority marked as urgent. Well... Hope you come by again. Excellent. Sorry for making up the call. I'm still getting used to the whole subterfuge thing you humans do. However, we can take another run at having a conversation with Jess. We have a dragon to slay. Onward. I'm ashamed to say I've gone on a few assy spike benders in my time. This is exactly what I needed to get my mind off things. And you're back. You know, as soon as I first saw you, I hoped you'd be dropped like a bad packet off the mesh net and I'd never have to see you ever again. So of course, I just got off the phone with Tomcat, practically begging me to help you out. You aren't so good at the long-term play thing, are you? You mean you don't stick both feet in your mouth every time you talk to a hybrid? Surprising! Let's just get one thing straight here. I'm only willing to talk to you because I owe Tomcat. I don't owe you shit! So if you want my help, you gotta do something for me. If you got a problem with that, tough. My neighborhood, my help, my rules. What I don't need is you kissing my fuzzy ass. Only people I like get to do that. I'm not buying it anyway. I need you to break up those human revolution protests. The ones at the Genus Clinic on Market Street. I'd like this handled with some stealth. Not that I expect you to know what discreet means. Either way, you just get it done. I got clients in the middle of treatment cycles. And this media circus is making their lives difficult. That means it's making my life difficult. Let the bastards go march somewhere else. Like Washington. 
not here. I'm just great. I'm peachy. My clients get harassed and beaten on the daily. I don't have the time or money to help them all. And I have jackasses like you bothering me on my one day off. So, you gonna braid my fur and we can talk about all our problems and boys we like? You want to help? Don't treat hybrids like animals for living out their lives. Shit, all of this isn't even a choice for some of us. You want to know what my deal is? You really want me to get sappy? Skin cancer. Stage three. My prognosis was so advanced that the doc said my bones were already lost. So I had to do something drastic. Completely restart my biology from scratch. You ever seen someone with a severe gene splice? From something freaky, like an insect? That's where hypertech began, you know where my therapy started. You can't imagine what it's like to have children cry from just looking at you, when people just see you and sprint the other direction. I had police following me everywhere I went. I lost my apartment, I lost my dignity. Eventually, I was lucky enough to qualify for the cute kitty cat cure to override the expression of the chitin. It changed my life. I have my job and purpose because of it. The fur doesn't scare the rest of the world too much to let me exist. Better an otaku's fluffy wet dream than the monster from a horror VR drama from Japan. My mom still can't look at me straight. Not to get even mushier, but as a kid, she would sing me a song as she counted all the freckles on my face. She hasn't let that go. You know how your folks look at you when they figure out you finally had sex or did crash? It's like that. All the time. Oh, now you're sorry. You haven't even heard the worst part yet. The amount of gene therapy I underwent exceeded the limit that the Human Protection Act allows for procreation. So yeah. The government freaking spayed me, if it all wasn't hilariously dark enough. First I'm too ugly to look at, now I'm too screwed up to breathe. Saving my own life forfeited my right to be a person. The Human Protection Act. Ha! Apparently protecting humans doesn't include me. Only genotypicals could live in this city and truly think they're the ones who need some protection the most. In any case, I had some clean eggs frozen, and we'll whip them out whenever I'm ready. Except keeping that shit on ice costs, and my insurance decided to just not pay up due to the elective nature of my feline gene therapy. So I took those bastards to court, and won, and I've been doing the same thing for everybody else ever since. So there you go. I got cancer. Super Science fixed me up and left me a freak, and then the government sterilized me so I wouldn't go out and make more little monsters. And everyone else gets to be the winner by default. Happy now? How's your savior complex doing? This is getting you off? Don't tell me you would have treated me better if you had. It's never true. I need honesty more than sympathy, you know? Break up those protests, and then we'll talk. All right, it sounds like we know what we need to do next. Let's go to Market Street and break up those protests for Jess. protesters
I have to admit that I still find the vandalism of Hayden's apartment puzzling. The protests themselves have been entirely peaceful so far. And the human revolution, regardless of the flimsy philosophical ground they stand on, are not a group known for projecting their ideology through unlawful means. The more I research them, the more I have to admit to the statistical conclusion that we're either dealing with a deceptive covert operation scenario, or less likely, a radical splinter group. Still, I doubt it will hurt to ask around. Brian Mulberry is there in the center. Fairlight said he was the one to talk to, and my mesh searches confirm that he is the leader of the local chapter of the Human Revolution Organization. He's a bit player on the national scene, but he seems charismatic and camera conscious from the video clips I've reviewed. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage? to hear about the dangers of our country's unchecked use of genetic modification? I have pamphlets! Here, take one! Oh, yes, Yannick called and said something about an investigation into an apartment break-in? He didn't elaborate, and I'm not sure how I might be able to assist with this. If Yannick is involved, I'll do whatever I can. How can I help? We found human revolution graffiti spray painted all over the apartment, and some things were stolen. I was hoping you might be able to point us in the direction of whoever did it. Ah, well, the human revolution certainly does not condone such actions at all. We're a peaceful organization and threatening people is not going to earn us hearts and minds. But... Off the record, some of our younger members can be a bit overzealous, as any hot-headed teenager tends to be. I'll look into this matter personally, and if I discover that any of our younger members were involved, they'll be turned into the proper authorities. I'll also let Yannick know anything I find out. Is there something else I can help you with? What questions can I answer for you? Modification is one of the most dangerous sciences we've ever fooled around with. 
It's playing God on the highest order and threatens to unseat what humanity is altogether. Cybernetics is a dangerous path as well, selling off pieces of ourselves bit by bit for mechanical strength and resilience, but at least a brain-controlled android is still a human brain, even if in a metal box. There is a reason Congress enacted laws prohibiting highly modified hybrids from breeding. Now, I do not fault the individuals who come here for treatment, many of whom are disabled and deathly ill. But if you ask me, genus isn't the kind of therapy they all need. However, we must take a stand against the medical research industry that would have us cast aside our humanity for their miracles. We hope to educate the public about the dangers of rapid technological advancements. We want to warn the country away from thoughtlessly accepting every scientific discovery we make before it's too late. We used to say that splitting the atom would surely bring about the end of humankind. But now we're changing the very things that make us human. Our biology, with nothing to ensure our safety. The revolution we're after is humanity as a whole making the decision to remain as we were created and return to how we lived before genetic science put us on the wrong course. This world is Icarus, flying too close to the sun. It's only a matter of time before our arrogance becomes our demise. Just because we can, doesn't mean we should. At our core, we are a peaceful movement and seek only to convince people to vote according to the truths we reveal to them. The human revolution has faith that American democracy will win out in the end. It falls to us to make sure that people are informed about the daunting and confusing technologies they put their senseless faith into every day. On a personal level, we would like to exhort every individual to try and live more simply and reject any gadget or medicine that would make us less than we are. Is there something else I can help you with? Of course! If you have any other questions, feel free to come back. I always have time for the press. You clearly missed doing real journalism. I'm impressed. I think you're starting to get back into the hard-boiled investigative journalist thing. Hopefully we'll get lucky enough to turn up a new lead, even if this one didn't pan out like we'd hoped. Golden, how fitting to use a quote from a newspaper publisher, and I agree with the sentiment. More leads will find us, should we seek them out. Let's keep moving. And don't forget, we're still here to actually break up these protests. Let's see if we can't figure out a solution together. to look around and think carefully. I'm sure we'll find something. Interesting. A RSU climate control ROM model 6703, if I am not mistaken. Apparently it is owned by the Hassi bar based on this identification marker. Let's not. Two's company, three's a cloud.
the basic passy flavors, but their specialty menu has other passy bar exclusive drinks like sassy passy, poison passy, classy passy, or a grassy passy shot. This rum serves up the hassy. the most 
most adorable little Rom! What kind of model is it? Where did you get it? It's so moe! Well, I hope you did more than just say thank you. It looks really expensive. Anyway, what can I get you? A drink I can do, and I guess I have some time to talk. The protesters outside the clinic are driving off a lot of my regular customers. Filling up my bathroom too, jerks! So, what do you want to know? introduced myself, did I? I'm Ramona. I guess there isn't much to tell. I went to college, got a degree, took out a loan and bought this place. Now I spend my days trying to find enough time and money to sustain my VR drama addiction. My priorities are justice, cute stuff, and magical girls, in that order. What else? I pretty much don't leave the store. Look, they've got the right to protest, but I don't have to like it. Once they're done with the hybrids, I know they'll be coming for me next. I'll be voting appropriately. And if I have to unclog one more toilet because I'm an entitled, bigoted, jerk face, I will lose my goddamn mind! Oh, you can't tell? I've got a cybernetic arm and leg, thanks to an auto cap crash when I was a kid. I also got neural links for VR interfacing. If it was up to those dinosaurs, I'd be stuck in a wheelchair right now. Or worse, depending on how far back they want to push our medical technology. It's already illegal for me to have a rocket powered fist! What more do they want? Sorry. Otaku speak. I just mean he's really cute and lovable, and you kind of want to hug him forever, you know? A lot of otaku come around here, probably because I own the place. I'm used to being able to shoot my mouth off and not explain all the jargon. Yeah, I know it's a bit out of fashion, but I'm a history buff. The past really gives context to stories of the present. You know what I mean? I've been to Tokyo twice already. The old otaku resists the new culture of the saishi in the same way their parents refuse to give up cassette tapes. Oh, sorry. The saiba shibido, the cyber day. In the early 21st century, Japan had an epidemic of chronic shut-ins, and the rise of direct link virtual reality only made that worse. Suddenly, people weren't just refusing to leave their rooms, they were refusing to leave their heads! But as the technology got better, the Saishi were the first to figure out how to use their own brains to sculpt cyberspace. Computers are good at thinking in straight lines, but the human brain is capable of so much more. The best virtual landscapes, the most real VR dramas and games, are created by the Saishi. Now, even if an earthquake or a meteor or whatever leveled Japan, they still have Neo Tokyo built on the VR net. But enough babbling. 
If you're interested, I'm sure you could find more out on the mesh or use an induction helmet to visit Neo Tokyo yourself. It's a trip, especially for newbies. It does a good job, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Well, technically, it's property of Hassie Holdings. We spent some mints on it, but the rest of the block helps pitch in for maintenance costs since I usually set it to patrol the whole area. You should check it out when we do Christmas in July. It can cover the whole street in snow, as long as it's cloudy enough to keep the sun off. Sort of like today. Sorry, but that thing cost me way too many credits to let just anyone poke at it. I would need to see some serious credentials before I let you mess with it. You know, enough to make sure you can afford to replace it if you break it. Otherwise, no touching. Okay, enjoy your drink and let me know if you need anything else. Him. Super rich guy? Used to own System 1? Why are you giving me his card? Yes! He's getting on in years and it would be useful for when he goes out and about. That's why we wanted to see it before. I guess you can take a peek. Don't bust it, though. I scanned this card, and I swear if you break my ROM, I'll be calling your boss. Here's the RFID key to access it. Thank you. This will surely be useful for our needs. Shall we go check it out? different climate control settings. Maybe we could make things a little more festive. Christmas is my favorite season. Should I switch it to snow mode? Okay, people, I for one didn't bring any winter wear. Let's call it a day for now. Excellent work! While I still have doubts about the moral superiority of using subterfuge to disperse a protest, we at least accomplished our goal peacefully. To be frank, considering how the human revolution is clearly working against my personal interests, I won't waste many clock cycles puzzling that ethical quandary out. Hmm. Might I draw your attention to those youths over yonder? Counterculture clothing, obvious bad attitudes, and graffiti paraphernalia. Those could be our suspects who damaged my home in the name of revolution. Right. We should approach them cautiously as to not start a confrontation with the wrong individuals. They may even point us to the true culprits. Oh no, they've noticed our attentions. Come along, maybe we can catch them. We'll never
ever catch them on foot. Hold on, I'm calling for an auto cab of our own. I know it seems a great deal of trouble for such a tenuous lead, but I have a hunch about them. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Ah, the auto cab is estimated to take five minutes to arrive. We'll never be able to engage in pursuit fast enough to catch up to them. Perhaps we should call Tomcat. Maybe they can do some bit of techno-wizardry and stop that cab. Excellent! Hold on while I connect us. Howdy, folks! How's the search for the data cache going? Actually, that's what we're calling about, Tomcat. We may have located the perpetrators, but they eluded us and are making their escape in an auto cab. We attempted to use a cab of our own to tail them, but it hasn't arrived and they're getting away. Can you hack the cab and stop it? Oof, no can do, little guy. Security on those cabs is tight, and the dang thing will shut down its external net connection long before I get in. Oh, I have an idea. Sit tight for just a sec. Alright! I went faster than spit on a skillet. I did a job a few years back and had to break into the city's central traffic network. Do me a favor and don't ask why. The back door I drilled into that long ago is still wide open. I'm logging into the traffic management system now. Wait. Oh, shit. It may not have fixed that back door, but they did install a new counter-intrusion VI. Oh, the damn thing is hot on my tail. I gotta take care of this VI. I'm gonna need the two of you to handle the traffic system. Turn, I'm passing control to you. Oh, Todd, I'm gonna be doing some two sets of hands on one keyboard kind of hacking. Just push on the map and loading up on Turin's face. Sorry, Turin. They're on the move! Here's how it works. Use your display map to keep track of their cab and redirect it back to you. You can trigger traffic nodes at intersections so the cab thinks the streets are blocked off. Do it right, and you should be able to steer them right back to you. You just gotta... to stop them where you're at, or else they'll just go running off on foot. I'll put a goal marker on the map for you. You can trigger any node on the map at any time, so plan ahead. I'd say you'll have time for two moves every time they hit an intersection. If they go off the map, though, you'll lose them. Block every road that leads out of our grid, and watch the places with three exits you can't all cover in one go-around. Just hurry. I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to keep this V out from messing on the carpet, and once I kill the connection, this old trick is over. I'll tap into the cab control node they're currently arriving at. Our 
top priority is to ensure they cannot leave the area Tomcat's given us access to. I'll mark the southern exit as closed first. We only have time to block off two routes before the autocab will make a decision and move. We shouldn't block the route back here. We have to stop them where we can catch them. Once you get them back here, press the big button on top of the map to shortwire the autocab. Be careful, if you stop their ride anywhere else, they'll just run off. What do you think our next move should be? Turn, I can't have you talking. It's messing with the signal. It's up to you now. Don't let those punks escape and don't trap them anywhere that's not here. We can access any of the control nodes in the area at any time. Plan ahead and we should be able to get them. Got it? Now, let's go! I'm gonna go stop them, and then we can interrogate the miscreants. What the hell do you want? Who do you think you're messing with, huh? You ain't got nothing on us, and if you don't get out of my way, I'll mess you up! we should do. We haven't observed them doing anything illegal, and we could potentially make this go over smoothly. Or, we could share news of this encounter with Lexi before things get out of hand. These two seem agitated already, and it may be best to make sure they're handled by the appropriate authorities. Answer their questions. I mean, we didn't do anything wrong, right? 
Um, right! We ain't got nothing to hide! We're newbie street artists. These are the tools of our trade! These are all above board and legal. We just got done making a piece for a client. That's right! We're artists! You a cop? Cause if you ain't, we ain't got nothing in the bag! Running? Who was I running from? You calling me a coward? Uh, I don't think that's what they were insinuating. Er, right! We just got places to get to, and gotta go fast! You're holding us up! Enough! Stop assuming you can misdirect us with blustery words and feigned ignorance! I've matched the hues of those paints and the patterns of the bottom of your shoes with 95% accuracy to the scene of Hayden Weber's apartment! Now tell us what you were doing there, and why you stole Hayden's data cache! Now you're accusing us of stealing? Why I oughta... Chad, I think they're onto us. Maybe we just answer their questions so they don't go to the cops? Damn it, Oliver! I told you I'm Starfucker now! I only went along with this because you said we would go to a movie afterwards. I don't even care about this human revolution stuff. Just because you're dad... Don't talk about my dad. Fine. Whatever. We'll answer your friggin' questions. Aw, oh, man. No big reason. I mean, he's a big hotshot researcher at Parallax, right? We heard a rumor his place was empty. Who's gonna pass up a sweet target like that? We don't need any more of this tech shit, like your lippy ROM over there! I told you we didn't steal nothing! Be quiet, Chad! I don't want to go to Juvie! Here, you can have it. Okay, well, thanks for giving it back. Yeah, whatever. Just get out of my way. We hope you find that Hayden guy. And we're real sorry. We weren't trying to hurt anyone. Alright, let's go catch that movie. Great! Can we get dinner first? Sure. Whatever you want. Deactivated snow mode. Incoming call from Tomcat. Hey folks! Jess just called and told me she has a clear way to the access node. She'll get you inside, and I'll walk you through connecting me so I can access the parallax network. That should help our hunt. Did you get the data cache? Yes, those punks happen to have it. Oh, great. We don't have time to worry about it right now, though. Go to Stardust and drop it off with Majid for me, okay? He'll hold it to pass on to me once I get there. I managed to trigger an alert within Parallax's network security, and they're gonna be moving their logs from one secure server to another. I need y'all in place of that access node before they do. No time for lollygagging. No problem, Tomcat. We'll make our way there directly after we return to Stardust. We can worry about the weather ROM's malfunction later. Let's go. Our mission for Jess is done. Don't bug it. It already seems to be in a stormy mood.
jerks not to break my romp! Now I can't get it to stop snowing! Those protesters are gone, but I'm still not gonna have any customers with it freezing like this! This Hessy Hot Cup is the perfect thing to warm me up! Snow? Out of nowhere? I guess I'll wait it out in here. Wow! Look at it out there! So magical! Uh, don't think I've forgiven you, you dingus! I better go get some Hassy Hot Cups going. Well, all's well that ends well, right? I'll check the mesh for common issues with the mode selector on the 6703 ROM unit and forward the solutions to the Hassy Bar owner. I'm certain she'll be able to get it turned off after the customer rush. hang out at Stardust, but they don't serve food, so I come here for Hassy Hot Cups during the day. Hey there, I go by Night Witch. process. If you'd like to look into splicing for yourself, let's save that for after our investigations. Welcome to Stardust. There's Majid. We should leave this data cache with him first, like Tomcat asked. Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? Alright, Tomcat asked me to take that off your hands and pass it on to them later. Thanks for getting it to me. I won't pester you about what it is. I know things are always very hush-hush with Tomcat. I'll make sure they get it later today. Give me a few minutes, okay? The trace amount of liquid left in their glass suggests the person was drinking. Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? What are you having? Remind me, what's in that? Drinkionary, the open up. Oh, I got this sweet. This one is. <laughs> Thanks, honey bear. Here you go. How'd you know my favorite? 
Haven't I seen you at my tattoo parlor before? I'm Boris. Have a seat. Well, as long as you don't mind me being distracted by this jerk. Oh, you don't know the half of it. My boss has just managed to lock themselves out of our company's servers. I'm not sure exactly what they did, and I don't have my company ROM on me, so I'm trying to walk them through what to do over the phone. It's not going well. It could be any number of things. I already confirmed it wasn't just a password issue. They probably deleted themselves off of the user table or something. I hate giving non-IT people that kind of access. But the higher-ups in the company insisted on it. So incompetent. I'll probably just have to go down there and do it myself. <sighs> ah, I'm not gonna be able to do this over the phone. I guess I gotta head out and take care of this. It was nice talking to you. Thanks for letting me vent. I hope it wasn't too much. Maybe I'll see you around? Welcome to Stardust. You again? All right, I'll let you in. But you better stay out of trouble. dancing now. Want to join me? Hey, I heard from my friends down the street that the protesters are gone. Must have been you, huh? Alright then, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and return the favor. Tomcat said that if you got to an old abandoned access node, you might be able to find out what happened to Hayden. I called up a buddy who's on night shift for Parallax tonight. He can buzz you in, but if anything happens, you broke in. This puts us at about even. Don't think about drawing any more debits for a while. Good luck. Keep me out of your shit. This is the place Tomcat said we should head to. Unassuming and quiet. Honest, I don't think I would be in this section of the city without Jess giving us the all clear. The crime statistics are quite alarming, so let us get done with our errand here and move on to safer ground. I am no 
coward. I resent the accusation. After all, I didn't see you arguing against doing that favor for Jess in the first place. But I don't feel like debating the merits of being prudent with you. Tomcat is waiting for us, and maybe we can wrap this whole investigation up once and for all. You know, right after we found Hayden's apartment in such disarray, I started looking into graffiti and street art more thoroughly. I have never much considered doing any of it myself, but it seems like an interesting avenue to pursue once I move beyond abstract expressionism. The simpler tags, visual shoutings of identity and existence, They exhibit a feeling I can sympathize with, but it's these larger pieces, riots of color and chaos, that really interest me. Petty vandalism is beneath me, but there are other avenues for the practice. For example, did you know that Los Angeles in the mid-2030s legalize the tagging of mural-style street art on any building without requiring permission from the owner or city. It was chaos of the highest degree for a while, but now the place is truly remarkable. Perhaps I will visit once this is all done with. hadn't even noticed. Do you have much experience with gonzo journalism yourself, reporting after or during direct participation? If you do end up writing on this experience, whatever you produce would be the very definition of it. You're too close to be objective now, and you're a key subject in this event. It doesn't seem to be your usual style, but you couldn't go another route at this point, and you're in the clear as you didn't instigate the situation. Hmm, I've never had much interest in the practice, but spending so much time around you has taught me to look at events in a different light, perhaps only because I can verify your personal experiences as fact. Sorry, I'm rambling again, aren't I? 
And we're on a schedule. I don't even want to think about this. What if we don't find Hayden? What if we do? My memory processors are shot from the stress of the past day. It's already taken a toll on me. But never mind. Let's find that access node. Find Hayden. This is the door to an apartment building. It's not the access node. Don't! The access node is next door to this building. That's the wrong place. Don't wake the Nabots! Did I say Nabots? I meant neighbors! Sorry, I'm really tired. Besides, this is the wrong door. This is the door to the access node that Tomcat told us about. We need to use the buzzer to get inside. The guard isn't actually here. You need to press the buzzer on the door to get access. Parallax lock, AN-19 security. Hello? Yes, can I help you? I was wondering when you'd get there. You're at the access node on Cesar Chavez in Indiana, right? That's right. Good. Be quick. Don't touch anything. Got it? This conversation never happened. And you're on your own if you get caught out there. I hope you find what you're looking for. This is it. Let's go inside and I'll call Tomcat. This place doesn't look like it's had any maintenance in years. I hope the systems are still functional. Oh, I forgot you can't see in darkness. Maybe that switch over there adjusts the lighting. Cat is pinging us, forwarding video and audio. Howdy! Y'all at the access node? I'm set to slice in once turn makes physical access. Of course, Tomcat. Just walk me through how to connect myself and I'll give you the necessary system permissions to use me as an interface. Just pat yourself into the Lynx terminal down there, and I should be able to get started. 
Connecting wirelessly to it. Now. Permissions granted. Uh, please be careful in there. Don't worry, though. I'm an old hand at this. You won't notice a thing. One sec. Oh, shoot. Y'all have a bit more to do before I can get the info we need. This system's still running on old cassettes, and the recall slot is empty. Can't call up Hayden's info file without it. There should be a cassette on the opposite side of the wall we can overwrite with the recall program. Pretty sure all that one was used for was phone monitoring. You know, from back when phone networks were separate from data networks? <laughs> I swear, y'all, I just turned 22. Anyways, we need to move that cassette across the room to access the records. Figure out how to do that and hit me back up when you've done it. According to this poster, the data cassettes can only be moved by using the links panel to control the utility arm. on them to move the data now, and we'll see if we can't slurp it right out of this network trunk. You would have thought that someone would have noticed and decommissioned this access node when the neighborhood went to hell, but this mouse is happy to play while the cat is away. Way back when I was a youngin', when I first hacked into Parallax's network, I mostly did it to make a point, yeah? They were just about to launch the MeshNet system, and I wanted to show the whole darn world that their security had more holes in it than Swiss cheese. And of course, I wasn't too shy about poking in a few more holes of my own devising while I was there. After putting in some more tricky software backdoors, I went ahead and deleted this access node off the maintenance schedule. Then, I reassigned the guy who was supposed to keep an eye on it to a different location. They were in the process of buying up a whole gaggle of these nodes in preparation to set up a private network for themselves. All just to use for the mesh net launch. Maybe a little too confident of them. Most of the software holes have been patched out as they've upgraded their network, but this whole place is just as forgotten as I left it. targeting one of their data centers with a botnet-driven DDoS attack, hitting every port into its network that I can find. 
Ain't likely to do much, but toss in a few attempts to crack the firewall and their VIs are shitting bricks. It's standard procedure for them to move their sensitive data to a different data center in case the attacker actually gets in. Make enough noise and it'll scare them enough into taking some defensive action, which is where we want them. The files are more vulnerable in transit. Now you'll just hold tight. I'll be done with this lickety split. Hmm. Surveillance camera footage. Oh, God. Oh, Turin. I'm so sorry. What is it, Tomcat? What did you find? He's... he's gone, Turin. Of course he's gone, Tomcat. That's why we're here. Shit. I, I mean, he's gone, gone, Turin. Hayden... Hayden is dead. That obviously isn't right, Tomcat. Why would they kill him? Can you send me the relevant files? You must have missed something. I, I don't think you should see it, but if you're sure. Parallax, the head security cam footage from the hallway outside Hayden's apartment encrypted on their network. Just a short clip. It looks like Hayden started to struggle with a couple of big dudes when they broke through the door and one of them shot him. I also found some chatter about it on some darknet channels. It wasn't a kidnapping. Somebody went there to murder him. I'm so damn sorry. assistance in this matter, Tomcat. I think I'll walk back to the apartment. I need some time to run some calculations about this new scenario. If you'll excuse me, keep digging through this data until they kick me out of the system. I'll try to find some kind of lead on why this whole thing started in the first place. Maybe I can find something out about who killed Hayden and why Parallax has a copy of the footage. It ain't much of a silver lining, but we have the answer on Hayden's fate. You're back. You know, Hayden was a brilliant programmer, far ahead of his time. I am a machine, and intrinsically, I do not have all the glands and visceral chemical reactions that make humans so emotional and brilliant. But his code is a flawless replication of that, inside my own personality algorithms. I don't think I've 
ever felt this... this... anger. It fouls my processors and fills my RAM with frustrating, half-finished plans of revenge. My motherboard burns in my casing from how little I can rest. I'm in pain and I can't make it go away! <sighs> I do not like the thoughts I'm having about the people who did this to him. I could. I can disable those modules. But if I turn off every emotion I don't want to feel, what does that make me? Would I still be me? If I were human, turning off my emotions would be seen as extremely unhealthy. There is a wealth of information on the MeshNet about human psychology. I just don't know how much of it applies to myself. Either way, Hayden deserves my grief. It is my way of honoring him. It may be the only way I can. I offer it freely. Did you see the jade plant? Its death is unfortunate, but fitting. Yet another thing to be guilty for. Helping me? I need you. To find the b bastards who killed my progenitor! I need to finish this. I don't know what I'll do afterwards, but I need to see this through. you'd keep me from losing myself in this. Let's make sure they have the appropriate time to atone for their crimes in prison. Even if it takes the rest of their lives. I think for now we should keep knowledge of Hayden's death between you, Tomcat, and I. It may give us an edge if the people we seek don't know how much we've already discovered. We'll talk after you've had some time to rest. You likely need sleep, and I need some time to... I... need some time. Good morning. I trust you slept well. I had ample time to recharge my internal batteries. It is upsetting that Hayden is... gone. But life for the rest of us goes on, yes? We still have a mystery to unravel, and I will waste no further processing time over something I cannot reverse. There is no point. <sighs> now that we are both refreshed, I feel it wouldn't hurt to recap our progress and determine if any changes should be made based on our successes and failures. Let's talk about how things are going so far. Since your journalistic efforts are a big part of why I originally recruited you, we can start there. Your inquiring mind has been a huge boost in our journey thus far. As a 
you're Rom, I can't talk to people as intently as you, so I must say I'm quite grateful for your skills in that regard. You're diligent in your day-to-day -day work as well, which further grounds my hope in you. Beyond journalistic persistence, let's take a look at how we've performed in other responsibilities. Specifically, our choices in overcoming obstacles. I must say, our first hurdle was handled masterfully by you, and we avoided any further issue. Great start! Furthermore, I am pleased with your utilization of non-violent methods. Eliminating any excessive risk should allow us to move swiftly. Finally, I was quite impressed by your ability to adapt on the fly, as they say, and perform so well when thrust into a sudden situation. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to discuss how we're getting along with our companions and allies along the way. It's important. I was very impressed with your negotiation abilities with those kids. We got our data cache, and they went on their way, and hopefully learned a lesson too. <laughs> Jess is a bit of a harder read, but she did agree to help us out in a big way. As long as her brash nature doesn't tempt you to lash out, I think things will go smoothly. Detective Rivers was good to involve as well, and I can tell you enjoy having a familiar face around. She could prove to be our greatest aid, as long as we make it worth her time. No funny business. Tomcat seems to genuinely care for our cause, and I have no trouble with letting their expertise guide us. Out of everyone else, they seem to be easiest to get along with, too. And finally, you and I. I must say, we have worked together better than I ever expected. I hope you feel the same. in our combined ability, and I enjoy your company as well. Please, continue showing me around the city as we continue our search. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've just about run out of leads. Perhaps Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. as we do. Always going so far for Hayden. They must have been close. of them, incoming call from Tomcat. Forwarding video and audio. Morning. Tomcat, thank you for your concern. Well, okay. 
Say the word if I can help out in any way. You hear? Of course. In fact, I was hoping you might have a lead for us to start working at. Otherwise, we're down to canvassing Hayden's address book and seeing if any of his contacts have an idea about who might have had a desire to target him. But that's just fishing in the dark. Well, I pulled a fair amount of data from the Parallax servers before they managed to kick me out, but it'll take me a while to go through it. A lot of it's unrelated. TPS reports, maintenance logs, juicy meat for other corporations, but about as useful as dirt to us. It'll take me a while to decrypt all of Hayden's files, but maybe we'll find something there. So, no, I don't have as much as a whiff of a trail on who's behind this. Oh, I, I recently got a strange request from a friend of a friend. Someone's been messing with the articles of a news organization named Augmented Eye. Seems like the network security head there is asking around for cybercrackers to help figure out how their reports are getting changed. The original files on their servers are untouched. In their system, everything looks peachy keen. Aside from the outside of the network, things have changed up. A word here, a phrase there, it's subtle, but often has a big impact on the article's tone. Someone with deep access to Parallax's mesh net is changing what's being shown. I ain't sure if it's related, but maybe y'all can head down to the main KCOB offices and Try talking to the gal that runs Augmented Eye? Her name is Zen. I ain't got the time or the desire to stick my nose that far out for a stranger, but it seems like your kind of deal. Hmm, it does seem to be a bit of a stretch. But if we have to wait for you to work on the data we've collected anyway... I'll pass the word along that you'll be in sometime today to stick your noses in. And I'll send y'all word as soon as I get anything worth hunting down. Excellent. Thank you, Tomcat. We are grateful for your continued assistance. No problem, Turn. Are you sure you're gonna be okay? Maybe you should take a little more time been through some shit in the past few days. I said I was fine. Thank you for your concern, but I am fine. I have already handled the reality of Hayden's death. It's time to move on with the investigation. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. I'm, I'm just worried. So, uh, I'm here if you need anything. Understood. Uh, I apologize for my tone, Tomcat. We'll be in touch. Alright. Later, turn. Okay, we have a lead, however tenuous. I've highlighted the Cos IO Corp office building on your map. Also, while we were talking to Tomcat, I received an email from Dr. Fairlight. Displaying. Ah, greetings. I hope you'll 
forgive me for a voice-only message, but I'm undergoing my treatment and would not call myself presentable for a video call. Still, I wanted to inform you of an idea I had while looking into our mutual acquaintance's disappearance. I haven't had any luck with my contacts inside Parallax, but I was reminded of an old friend by the name of Melody Flores, who may know more about the nature of Hayden's research. She's the owner of Flower Cybernetics, and Hayden has been known to work closely with them on projects involving the intersection of Parallax's systems and the implants that Flower designed. Melody and I are no longer on speaking terms, so I'm afraid I can't introduce you. But perhaps the intrigue of Hayden's little robot will get you entry into her home. this lead serves you well. If you need anything else from me, I will be in and out of the hospital room where we met for the next few days. I will send word if I have any other insights or discoveries. Yours, Dr. Yannick Fairline. Interesting. I had no knowledge of Hayden ever working with Flower Cybernetics, but now I'm starting to understand just how little I really knew about his research. Maybe this melody can reveal more about the purposes of my construction. Hayden must have kept my development secret for a reason. Hopefully we can talk our way in. I have highlighted Melody's home on your map. Okay, we can now either follow Tomcat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. Up to you where to go first. Tomcat's led us in the right direction so far, but Fairlight has resources and his tip might end up being more relevant. It depends on what you want our focus to be on, in terms of tracking Hayden's trail. Should we follow the media or the tech? It's fitting. They're the two factors that make Neo SF so unique and wonderful. them both to the fullest, there's no way we won't be closer to the answer. I would have cyber cracked you through access to that. Keep it safe. Okay, we can now either follow Tomcat's lead to KC. It depends on what you want our. Up to you where to. Wow, you really like giving hugs. Good thing I do too. <laughs>
to keep this name. Do you wish to keep this name? Thank you. I have input your name. Next, could you tell me which pronouns I should use for you in referential and conversational speech? Thank you, I have input your pronouns. Finally, could you tell me... Diet set as omnivorous, are you sure? Thank you for confirming. I have obtained your physical location. Please review... In does that sound? Thank you. Here we are. The Cos IO Corporation Office Building. It looks like most of the businesses on this block are a part of the same corporate coalition under COS IO. Well, perhaps. At the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eyes articles. Not impossible, but unlikely. Generally, the companies in a coalition don't have a whole lot of overlap. Augmented Eye is a news app focused on local tech and culture stories, with an emphasis on hybrids, rights, and cybernetics issues. None of the other companies in the coalition cover news, so they aren't related at all, which is very much standard practice for these groups. They have nothing to gain by inviting companies with whom they compete. And thus, none of them would benefit by trying to undermine Augmented Eye's credibility as a news source. In the early 2020s, the California government was pretty much going bankrupt. A poor national economy and repeated voter initiatives meant the state didn't have the tax revenue to continue running municipal services. They kept pushing the tax burden down the totem pole until poorer cities were just flat broke. No police, no road work, complete public service collapse. Then, one of the smaller cities sold all of their public infrastructure, police and fire included, to a private corporation. This was eventually challenged in court, but several Silicon Valley corporations started a grassroots initiative to have citizens pass an amendment to the state constitution allowing it. They succeeded, and most of the major cities in the state sold off their public services to private corporations. Some places, like Los Angeles, just sold to the highest bidder. Which is probably why LA is essentially in a constant gang turf war, 
with one side wearing the uniforms of the studio-owned police forces. The cities in the Bay Area were a little more selective, and most of the municipal services are owned by multi-corporation coalitions. They split the bill of running the city between them and keep each other from being too corrupt in their usage of the police force and such from fear of a PR disaster and being kicked out of the coalition. It means there isn't as much money going around, which is why the NSFPD's equipment is out of date and the MeshNet is so successful over normal cable networks. After all, without the promise of a city infrastructure bought and paid for, the corporations all treat running the city like a charity and PR stunt. But, at least the police aren't irredeemably corrupt, the fire trucks still show up on time and the water runs to all parts of the city. That can't be said for some areas of the state. Ah, uh, I haven't spent enough time learning about the subject or politics in general to give you an educated answer. If I go by the posts people make on the MeshNet, I'd say a combination of having bigger fish to fry and caving to corporate pressure. People seem certain that the larger multinational companies would love to be able to buy their own towns on a national scale and are pumping money into Congress to try and make that happen. They hold up Neo-SF as an example of their success, while trying to bury the problems in L.A. as an anomaly. Combine that with unrest abroad, and I guess they don't have a whole lot of motivation to try and stop it. Historical precedent seems to lend credence to this interpretation if you're willing to believe my hasty readings on the subject. You're welcome. I am happy to assist.